Arabic at all. Yes, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I want us to, we are talking about your kingdom come. We began yesterday. We began yesterday. Your kingdom come. This is a prayer Jesus prayed. The first thing he taught his disciples is just learn how to worship him as your father. Yeah. You know, everybody who has a father, even if you want, you want to worship him, there is a kind of reverence. There's a kind of honor. There's a kind of, you know, when you look at your parents, whether father, mother, there is a reason as to why you just need to be grateful. Yeah. A reason, a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason you can't abuse them. There's a reason you cannot insult them. There is a reason you have to take care of them with whatever you have. Why they took care of you when you are not aware. Always when I look at one month baby in our house right now, uh, and screaming, doing anything, he doesn't even know where he is. <laughs> so this baby will come up sometimes back and he will understand himself. And uh, I think I need to do what I can do as a father so that one day they can know how to appreciate. So when Jesus says, refer to the God of, as a father, because of just creating you, there is a kind of honor that God deserves. Just for your existence. The other day, he didn't even know, he didn't appreciate that the reason that's why he lived. He was trying to, we were trying to push him to the church, he refused. The next thing he did is we went for a HBC meeting. Only to be told, you know somebody drank a So that one could kill him. He just went and then hanged himself the same night. This person never appreciated God. You don't appreciate God, you don't appreciate life. Is that true? Yes, you don't appreciate this life. Anything that, you see, if you begin your life from a place of worship, everything will be available to you. Everything. If you look at the prayer of Jesus, he never told them to ask what they need first. To recognize that there is God in heaven who is your father. And he says, worship him, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Now, let's, let me read something here. Matthew chapter 4. Very common verse we read. We were asking yesterday a question. Let me begin from verse chapter 3. Just to show you something. I want to contribute on something for 20 minutes. Verse 13. Chapter 3 of the book of Matthew, verse 13. The Bible says, Then comes Jesus from Galilee to Jordan and to John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of you. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becomes us to fulfill all the righteousness that he suffered it all. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went out straight out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning or lighting over him upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. In whom I am well placed. Wow. What happened when you were baptized? Heaven opened and God says, This is my son in whom I am well, well placed. Wow. But I want also to, to consider what was he doing before? For the 30 years, what, what was he doing? Prayer, his word. The Bible says, Then was Jesus led up out of the spirit up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, 
command that these stones be made bread. Before Jesus begins his work, there is an attack on his life here. There's an attack on his life. Before he begins the work, someone is there to test him. He didn't do anything. Look at, look at how Jesus, I want you to look at how this, this conversation, I know you people have been reading all your ears, but let's, let's look at it in a different way today. And when the tempter came, verse 4 says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What is this man saying? Verse 5. Let me continue, then I will come back. Then the devil takes him up in the holy city and sets him on a pinnacle of the temple and says unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the, the Lord thy God. Verse 8 says, again the devil takes him up into the ex, an exceeding high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And says unto him, all these things will I give unto you if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, get thee hence Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, him only thou shalt, shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaves him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto, unto him. Wow. I was talking about something yesterday. I was saying that there's a kingdom that is already reigning in our environment before we arrive on earth. Jesus is now being revealed to the to his environment to his town, to his generation, to his territory. And the devil now recognizes after God said, this is my son. Now God, the devil wants to prove, are you really the son of, of God? Are you, are you, are you really? <laughs> are you son of God? Are you? Yeah. You know the way sometimes people belittle our salvation on us. They laugh at you. The other day I saw Eric Omondi crying on a pulpit. And I always look at him, how he jokes with the church. And I wonder if he's serious there. You know, there are comedians who always look comedians, even when they are there. He's, he's, he wanted to do something for his brother. He stood there to speak something. I asked myself a question. If he's always ridiculing the church, can he really truly stand there expecting God to don't need to joke with God. There's a way we joke with God. So the devil is, in other words, in the environment that Jesus has been presented, the people living in that environment, the same temptation has been presented to them. If you look at the first temptation, it's talking about what? It's focusing Jesus on the physical things. Yeah? The big temptation for everybody. That is why even if God blesses you materially, that is nothing. Whether you have a house, a big house, whether you have, may God give it to you in Jesus' name. May you build a house this year. Maybe for somebody, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Some people are intending to rent now, they're like, God, am I? Yes. May God give you a house this year. Let me see who will have it by the end of the year. Because it will happen. You people come and sit. I don't know what you're expecting. What did you come to hear? <laughs> if you don't hear this, what do you want to hear? But God giving you a land and a house and a vehicle and all, that is not enough. The devil is trying to focus Jesus. Forget about the one that you're focusing on as you pray and fast. Look at eh, when, that is what he did to Eve. Eve what did he do to Eve? He just showed him her something. When she saw physically 
yeah. And then she. Jesus never argued with the devil whether he has the power or the, all the riches of the earth, whether it belongs to him or not, because it belonged to the devil. The day Abraham, sorry, Adam fell, that is the day the devil took over the whole world. So when Jesus is coming, he, he comes knowing somebody is already ruling. But one thing he never did, he never submitted himself to that one. Never. Never listened to what he said and did it. No. Never allowed himself to what is happening. That's why. This is a statement I want to make. You know you can sit in Marsabit and then you look like Marsabit. You can, you can stay here and yeah, until you look like Marsabit. There's a principality in Marsabit who will make the life of everybody to look alike. Yeah, principality. Jesus didn't come to look like his environment. I am going to expose something. The whole of this month. I'm speaking about the whole kingdom come. The whole of this month. And I want to show you something. You know many times you assume whatever happens, God did it. Not God. Not God. Not God. Before Jesus came, was there healing happening everywhere? I'm asking. In fact, from what we just read, the Bible says, as he was baptized, heaven did what? Open. It means heaven was not open before. How are people dwelling there? Darkness has covered everything. darkness. He comes to the church. He sees sick people. He gets angry. Today a pastor can stand there and feel okay when somebody is sick. Mungu akusaidie. Mungu. <laughs> heaven is closed. When heaven is closed, it is oppression for everybody. The Bible says everywhere he went, what did he see? He saw human beings like what? Sheep without? Sheep without? Shepherd. Everywhere he went. I am coming from not hard. I went there and I'm like, wow. This is how people live. No network. No church. <laughs> you even wonder, he, Unaishi Aja. My jet are particular. I don't know where they get. I am like, and you went there and I'm like, we preached, people got saved. The only place we will take them is where? Other church. No any other church around. And, I'm, and then, you know, where the word of God is not, we'll always see possess, demon possessed people. We saw so many, not one, so many. When we arrived, this they came from every area. Pray for us, they are bringing sick people from everywhere. Who is ruling that environment? You will tell me, God, yeah. When somebody dies, what will you say? God loved you more. Ah, a lie. <laughs> no, Jesus could interrupt somebody who's being taken to the grave and bring him back to life. He didn't say, Rest in peace. Is it God who killed him? No. No. So when he came, the devil tried him, but he could not. Somebody must decide never to look like Marsabit and its people. Somebody must decide to. You should not fail because people disown us. When I came here to begin ministry, I am told of so many stories of people, pastors who failed. I am not a type that fails. Amen. No, I'm not, I'm not a type that fails. No, no. I said, you can't make me what you are. I have to interrupt this environment and allow heaven down and turn people's life around. We are talking about why should you pray? 
are talking about the, the prevailing prayer. So the, the, what this prevailing prayer, what is it about? You cannot afford to continuously fail in life. You cannot afford to be at the same level every now and, and then. You cannot afford to look hopeless and helpless. Yeah? There has to be a turn around it. When people look at you, they should at least see progress. Progress. Nini kukuta uko jana, leo umefika? Somebody came here and then she saw the door is changed. And then she saw these things here. And then she says, one month, only two weeks I left, everything changed. You know when you are revived, even your environment will be revived. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> if you are revived, your environment is yeah, it's revived. So, what I'm saying is this. There is something already ruling the environment. When you come and begin living in a place, Jesus, they, they began Jesus early in, before even he began anything. Early. He did fail. I think these demons must have realized, this devil must have realized that this one is different from everybody in this this area. Indeed, he was different. He was different when he came. Now, when I talk to you, I, I don't talk to you like a pastor. Praise the Lord. Let me introduce something about myself. I'm not here as a pastor. You, I want you to know why I came to town. Because I can, you know, like, a pastor can easily just begin a church, run church one day, and then stay there in the church. And do. The reason we are here is to bring down the principalities and powers that rule the city and release people to prosper and grow the kingdom of God. That's the major reason we are here. That's why things that other pastors are saying is impossible, I can do. Amen. I'm saying I can. And I'm saying I can do. I know the grace I have. Apostolic grace. I was not just called for a small building like this here. The whole territory from Isiolo all the way to Garissa. How does it go? The work we have has to cover all these places. Yeah. From Isiolo to Garissa, what is there? What is there? There's a way it covers the environment and it brings down the name of Jesus. But we are here to bring it down. So if you see Divine Life Sanctuary in Siolo, don't be surprised. If you're going to sit in Moyale, don't be surprised. In Mandera and Wajia, the churches only happen in police station. Anointing has to come to break that principality and put a church in the middle of the city. Yeah? Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise people will remain the same. Oppressed. Right now, if you look at one side, who is living better? Christians or Muslims? Who is living better? Who has more power? <laughs> My God is great. Where is he then? <laughs> if your God is great, you should not struggle to get food, my friends. <laughs> food to eat. Your money is in somebody's pocket right now. <laughs> your money is in somebody's account as I am talking right now. By the time I finish this thing, may God bring back to you what belongs to you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. People are looking for what we... You need something to break these principalities. And bring down the kingdom of God. So that what belongs to you, you receive it. 
the devil is telling Jesus. He did an exam for him. Jesus don't have to answer the way the devil wants to hear. Yeah? It is, it does, who is the devil? A fallen creature. It's only that on earth here now, he has taken the authority from Adam and he has a say. But the, Jesus came to destroy him. That's what he came to do. To destroy him. He went to the cross and died there. The devil thought he has finished him. He was finished. So he went to hell. Took that key and came out. And then he says, all power. Eh? That's what he said. All power. Let me tell you something. There is no power without money. <laughs> if you have dominion, you must have money in your pocket. Can you say nothing is expensive for me? You'll understand later. That statement will make everything cheap for you. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. When you are given, why do you think people are fighting to become a governor, to become a president? Why, why, why do you think? They will sit on the treasury. The governor of this land is managing over 8 billion every year. Yes? 8 billion. It doesn't belong to him. Now there's a problem. You can have what belongs to you. I am looking forward for a time when believers become richer than non-believers. It is not far from now. Not far. It's not broke. How long will your pocket be empty? Somebody should be very angry. Uh, <laughs> how long? How much do you have right now? <laughs> and then you look at the other one also. I'm not trying to tell you. <laughs> and then you look at the rain. And your money is not in your pocket. Your money is somewhere. You have to bring it down and have it. If these principalities and powers are thrown down, when I was looking for an offering bag, you know that thing? You can't find this kind of thing in many churches. So, something very small. I went to Nairobi, I looked for a big one. There's a bigger one than this one there, the other side. I want this thing to carry one million, five million, huh? ten million. Is it possible? Did you see people putting some money here sometimes back? Although you keep an ability to wash it. Because a politician in India can done it. An ability to wash it. And thank God this this demonstration has stopped that evil money coming to church. Yeah. It has stopped. Why can't you or any of you bring it and feed it there? After you have caught in a genuine way and put it there. Yeah. The only reason why the politician will, will fundraise for you is so that you give them their votes. And you will get nothing out of their being in that position. The day of being oppressed is over. In Jesus' name. So what I want you to see, because I don't have time to speak much. We'll be speaking 30 minutes every day for the rest of this week. Thank God this week I, uh, it has, I couldn't go to class. I'll be here. And I want us to ask, we, you see when we talk about prevailing prayer, what do we mean? You cannot afford to remain the same. That's what I'm talking about. You cannot afford. And you cannot. You cannot. You cannot be in the same place every year. Every year. Same place. A place where somebody is all, people know whether you're progressing or not. Do they know? They do. They will see you this year. 
they will see you next year they will see you another year if truly you are in the kingdom you should be shining in your environment yes yeah the reason is why we must pray and Jesus put us in his place when he left. You see, when he went on earth, I want to show you every town he entered, how the demons were trying to attack him or come against him. Or he cast them out. There must be demons that should be cast out of this town. This town. This town. Otherwise, you will not enjoy life. I am looking for believers who can comfortably hire expensive halls in this town as if they are paying ten bucks. Now you understand this language. Yeah, I'm looking for that. Then, then you can tell me you have dominion. Dominion. Then you know the devil is saying, Jesus, I will give you riches, I will give you this. He knows that riches for as far as he has not died on the cross, it is in his hand. The day he went to the cross, he did not only buy you, he did not only save human beings only. He bought everything on earth. And he chased them out of this world. Jesus. That's what he did to the devil. He emptied in other words, even the resources in our town belongs to who? To you. And you are begging for a job. You are begging for. You can create a job in prayer. Yeah. You can create. When the kingdom happens, everything that belongs to you will freely come to you. There is liberty when the kingdom happens. There is freedom. No scarcity, abundance. There is all manner of things that God has for you. The Bible says, eyes have never seen. Truly, eyes have not seen. Yes? Whatever God has for you, you have not seen yet. You have not seen. You have not seen yet. <laughs> what God has for you, your eyes have never seen. Your ears have never. Might be you are hearing for the first time. Might be your hearing uh, when this word is coming to you. You cannot sit here and hear this and remain the same unless you have decided to remain the same. I don't want you to come here like you go to your whichever service you go to. You know, there's a way you're religious on Sunday, we don't understand it. People should come expecting something to happen to them. Yeah. People should. This is our brother here the other day. He, I told him to write something down he wrote. Everybody wrote. He wrote in his mother tongue, Amharic, and he wrote something. And then when I met him later, I was told he needs 16K. He, he did some calculation. After two days, he had 18,000. Amen. I want to see that business grow until anybody who ever knew you wonder whether they have ever seen you. It's possible. It is a, this is a place of transformation. Where God will give freely to us what belongs to us without being hindered by our environment. So we pray. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. I will explain all that, what it means. Rulers of darkness. Huh? What shall we? <laughs> Them that rule the environment, they chant every morning, every night from midnight. Somebody's at work. Influencing your environment, you are asleep, so you just wake up, and the environment has been programmed. Well, so when you wake up, 
you wonder why things are not working. You are sleeping and somebody was doing something on you. So you come out and you're like, God, what is, what is wrong? You begin, you begin seeing accident happen. And then you say, somebody died. Why me? Why, why me? Stop that language. Start praying. Why me? Why am I a victim? Many people are victims even in the church. But they have never understood how darkness has covered the environment and causing them not to move forward. You can't just sit in Masabi town and assume all is okay. And you never prayed. The devil will beat your head. <laughs> you will do things that until you are like that the devil this man died. I want to finish with this. And Philip died. One of the bishops asked him, how can you console this this young man? You know they are telling people God loved him. Until I wrote something on Facebook and many people told me at least we are, we are seeing some. If this one can give us relief, maybe what you are saying can make sense. And at least what you are saying can make. If anybody is anointed and he arrives in an environment and you begin seeing attack on that person. It is not people. It's not people. I came here. They began speaking about me for more than five, six years. They have now kept silent. And they're not going to speak anymore. When anointing is on you, you are wanted in the spirit world. They will look for any means to eliminate you. So you don't pray. He, he sings, he's very anointed, he sings these songs. But does he pray? Do people pray for him? How much prayer is deposited there? Chetanda nakupata tu kiraisi. Kama wewe si wakuoma. Very easily. He will get to cheaply. And he will throw you away. And then a pastor is very ignorant will sit there and say, God loved him. No, no. I told that bishop, you people know how to speak things. Just speak the way you want to speak. As far as I'm concerned, this thing is not of God. The devil took the guy. You didn't pray for him. You, you didn't pray for him. That's why I always ask, pray for me. Yeah, pray for me. I am on a, a mission in this land. Until the devil bows. Malaysia pale. 